How's it going, everyone? We are coming up on the release of Stellar Blade, quickly approaching. That game will be dropping in April, and as we're getting closer to its release date, we are getting more and more information about the game. Have quite a few updates to go over in this video. We have the graphics modes that will be available in the game, a bit of an update on its game structuring as far as microtransactions are concerned. We'll talk about that. Don't worry, there are no microtransactions if you guys are worried about that. And Stellar Blade has been rated uh, in the ratings boards, and we'll talk that at the end of this video. Now, before we get into this video, I just want to ask you guys, please like this video and do leave a comment with your thoughts. It really does help out the channel a lot, and it is much appreciated. But uh, first of all, Stellar Blade will have three graphics modes confirmed. Performance mode, that'll be at 60 frames per second. Resolution mode at 4K. And balance mode with a balance between the two previous modes. You would have to assume that resolution mode at 4K is going to aim for 30 frames per second. For a fast-paced action game like this, I think performance mode is going to be ideal at 60 frames per second. However, Final Fantasy 16 was a fast-paced action game as well. And I think a lot of people opted to go the visual route and the graphics mode for that game just because the performance mode really dipped in resolution. So we'll see how it ultimately turns out with Stellar Blade. We are coming to the realization pretty quickly this generation that 60 frames per second is just not going to be the standard for a lot of games. They're not going to be able to hit 60 FPS consistently in terms of just a locked 60 FPS. And I get that does annoy some people. And a lot of people went into this generation thinking that 4K 60 was going to be the standard. And that, I don't think, was ever really going to be the standard. That's just very hard to maintain. And I think people really have to still come to the conclusion that we are working with a $400 or $500 box. And to get 4K 60 FPS out of a $400 or $500 box is just wild to think about. I believe Final Fantasy 16 wasn't even initially going to have a performance mode, then they got it working. And uh, you saw how that performance mode turned out. I still enjoyed that game in performance mode, but that was a game where a lot of people went the graphics route just because the resolution was dipping so hard. But uh, Stellar Blade, we'll see how it ultimately turns out. Three different modes, and I imagine the balance mode is going to be uh, a fluctuating frame rate so that might not even be ideal i know some people just absolutely hate when games are fluctuating from 30 to 60 fps like sometimes it's at 32 sometimes it's at 38 then it goes to 45 then it dips back down to 32 you get the idea that's just not the ideal experience for a lot of people if it was let's say a balance mode with a locked 40 frames per second that would be something uh interesting to me and i actually think something that people would uh, gravitate towards and i think that's something that a lot of games should look at if we can get a locked 40 frames per second and then still have some of the bells and whistles of the graphics component just throwing that idea out there all right also a lot of talk with games these days about microtransactions even if you're just a single player game that doesn't mean you could be free from microtransactions i mean we look at some of the newer assassin's creed games and i know i always got to get my shade in assassin's creed these days but uh, as far as Stellar Blade is concerned, it was noted in an interview, Eve appears to have a lot of different outfits and hairstyles in the trailer. How important is character customization in Stellar Blade? Approximately how many options will players have in the final game? And it was noted there are about 30 different outfits available in the game, and they're all acquirable through gameplay. So you can explore, go on a quest, or go to the in-game shop to purchase them. You can enjoy the collecting element of that game. Also, by going on quests, you get to unlock hairstyles, so you can customize different looks. And there are ex other accessories like earrings and glasses but most important is the part is that these are all acquirable in game without any additional purchases and it was all noted that all of these outfits again will be unlockable in game i think people are getting a little bit irritated with heavy microtransactions even if it's just for cosmetics i don't think we should let that slide if it's microtransactions attached to only cosmetic items because back in the day guys wasn't cosmetics just a part of unlocking uh you know doing specific objectives and unlocking them throughout while playing the game and you're talking about 70 dollars games yes i know that game prices have remained stagnant and they're trying to figure out different ways to monetize the game but thankfully stellar blade it is a $70 game. It does have a deluxe edition, which I believe is $10 more, but it's nothing too crazy with that deluxe edition. It's not any early access nonsense baked into the game. And uh, it looks like, you know, you'll be able to buy the standard edition of the game, no problem. We also talked about, as far as game length goes, we did talk about the game being around 20 to 25 hours if you go through the main story, but there will be optional quests and things like that. I wouldn't be expecting something at the level of some of the bigger games that you guys are playing these days. As far as Stellar Blade being a game that you can put 70, 80 hours into, they noted that, you know, a 
completionist run can take anywhere from 30 to 50 hours, and I I would have to assume that it's closer to the 30, 35 hour range rather than the 45, 50 hour range, just because 30 to 50 is such a lengthy window and a large discrepancy between the two. I would I would have to assume that it'll be closer to 30, 35. But you know, for a $70 game, I think 30 to 35 hours of quality content is super ideal. I am not a big fan of when games get too big for their bridges, and a game like Stellar Blade, if it went for 70 to 80 hours of content, what would it be? And ultimately, that content would begin to get diluted. At least I would think that would ultimately be the case. And uh, we'll see how the game turns out. I would much prefer a quality 20 to 25, 35 hour completionist run that is an enjoyable experience the whole way through that I can play for that 35 hours. Six months down the line, I'll be like, hey, that Stellar Blade was a really good game. Let me do another playthrough when it's a quiet period as far as game releases go. And I think a lot of people would prefer that. I think they would just prefer a more compact experience with a lot of quality that they can replay sometime down the line instead of these overbearing, super, super lengthy games with a lot of content, but ultimately some of that content is getting diluted. But uh, my rant over uh, with Stellar Blade, at least you can expect all of the content to be unlockable as far as costumes go by just playing the game. Lastly, I do want to know, man, did this get a lot of attention or what? Stellar Blade has been rated 18 plus for nudity and excessive violence. Don't get too, too excited. As noted on Insider Gaming, it was recently revealed that Stellar Blade, the upcoming post-apocalyptic slasher, was given Korea's most mature rating by the Game Management Committee. The ESRB also did rate Stellar Blade 17 plus for a mature audience. They note blood and gore, language, suggestive themes, and violence. So yeah, as far as the audience goes, it is a mature 17 plus game. They note this is an action adventure RPG, which players assume the role of a super soldier battling an invading alien force. From a third person perspective, players explore apocalyptic environments and complete mission objectives while battling enemies, alien creatures, humanoid, and melee style combats. Players use blades, machine guns, and laser blasters to kill enemies. Battles are fast fast pace highlighted by sword slashes, large explosions, and realistic gunfire. Blood splatter effects occur frequently as enemy creatures are slashed up and dismembered. Some cutscenes and battle sequences depict close-up images of impalement, dismemberment, and decapitation. The game depicts some female characters in revealing costumes, and um, yeah, I'm not even gonna read the rest of it. You guys can read the rest of it if you want, uh, but nonetheless, the game obviously, uh, thematically, let's just say it has some interesting choices, and I'll leave it at that. I mean, I don't gotta spell it out for you guys, but I think as if this game ends up being good, I think Eve is going to be a character that is, uh, you know, that reappears in a lot of other games. If this game does well, like, I easily see there being a sequel and all of that stuff, especially if they have the fundamental aspects of a quality action game in place. Yeah, this game is going to pop off, I think, and it'll be interesting to see as a true PlayStation 5 exclusive how it's received on that standpoint. I do think it would be wise to ultimately do a PC release of this game. I mean, we've seen it with Helldivers too, not to, you know, ramble about that game as well, but I think a big reason for that game's success was the uh, cross-platform release right out the gate. And uh, obviously that is a multiplayer focused game, cross-platform play and everything like that. But I think based on it being released on PC, just added to the discussion online. And if Stellar Blade was released on PC, I think it would be added to um, the discussion when this game ultimately does come out. And I'm sure it'll drop on PC, maybe by the end of this year, next year. Uh, it's been rumored that PlayStation's gonna shorten these windows as far as their PC releases. But we'll see what happens as far as that's concerned. I, I think the PC modding community is gonna be absolute fiends when it comes to this game. And let's just put it at that. But that is gonna do it for me. Stellar Blade will have three graphics modes. You've got a performance mode, resolution mode, and a balance mode as well, with a balance between the two previous modes. As far as all the costumes go, all of the costumes, uh, customizable aspects, all of that is going to be unlockable in-game. You don't have to make any in-game purchases or anything like that, and it has been rated 18 plus in the Korean ratings board and mature 17 plus in the ESRB. That's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.